my whole thing is simplicity. Uh, you know, I ran a very large uh, option firm uh, back in the 80s, and I was in charge of um, 60 uh, traders who were trading uh, clients' money. And whoever, uh, you know, whether they were doing well or doing poorly, I, I had meetings with them on, on a daily basis almost, and at least once a week, especially if they weren't doing well. And I noticed that those that had simple trading plans, uh, those that trade in a simple fashion were the ones that had consistently good numbers. Those that tried to keep tweaking and adding and subtracting. Uh, I really believe in sticking with one simple way of doing things. And and uh, and and ch in other words, I, I'm I'm slow to change. And, uh, and 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 I think you should too. It's really a matter of testing. So. If you've got some suggestions on what you'd like me to take a look at, uh, you're looking at a commodity screen here, but I also have a uh, trade station, which I don't really, um, I don't really um, use much anymore except for purposes like this. Um, if you've got a, a stock or a um, something that you'd like me to look at, otherwise I will just continue to show you what I've been looking at. Uh, I think that's what we'll do. I don't see any suggestions quite yet. Um, so if you've got one, let me know. But in the meantime, let's take a look at what I think could be a very interesting market coming up, and that is gold. This is the daily chart of gold. Uh, I've seen a video. Okay, I'll get to that. Uh, uh, Actually, let's do that now, since you uh, kind enough to <laughs> ask for something. Let's uh, let's see the. All right, let's put on the video here. One of the few stock symbols I actually know. All right, here's the daily chart of Nvidia. Let's blow it up a little bit. Uh, Paul, do you do you trade this on a daily basis, or 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 do you um, or, or are you a long term trader looking to do well over time? Tell me which uh, which one you which flavor you are, and I'll try to hold my comments. Okay, long term. Okay, well let, let's take a look at what we're looking at here. I mean. <laughs> uh, there are two things that that I need to um, suggest to you uh, right away. I mean, first of all, this is a, a, a pretty solid uptrend, of course, with all the positive news and all the positive um, uh, talk about NVIDIA when it comes to um, the um, AI. Uh, you know, this is this caused this jump as well as what looks like it's trying to be topping action, but I certainly wouldn't trust it as topping action quite yet. Um, I mean, you had your chances um, from a standpoint of, of watching a double top here. This is a very negative, right here is a very negative um, signal. Let's see if I can zoom in on that a little bit for you. Uh, maybe not on this one, but this, um, when you see, this is the eight bar exponential moving average. This is my bread and butter uh, all of the trading plans that I've written over the last five years have included this as the backbone of, of the trading plan. Um, it's the 8 EMA. Some use the 9 EMA. I like the 8. Uh, again, it, you've got to test. Don't take anybody's word for anything. You need to, to test it for yourself. And, uh, and those that know me know that I'm a, 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 I'm a proponent of um, prop trading. Where, um, where testing becomes something that you can uh, do while you're qualifying for, um, for being funded for anywhere from 50,000 to 500,000. Um, so uh, that's an area that um, you certainly can find me and question me about. But right here, uh, and Nvidia, um, of course, you're looking at an uptrend. There are two things I need to talk about. One is that, is this topping action? So, you know, I'm, I'm, I, any long position is, is going to have uh, some resistance here at, at this high as we've tested it once. Uh, dramatic movements like this t tend to make double and triple top. So we've got the double. I wouldn't be surprised if this is the start of a triple, but I'd I would like to see a little higher uh, area here. This actually, you, if you're looking at the other moving averages, this is the 20, the 50, and the 200. Uh, I don't use them much really, except for um, except for the knowing, I, I only have them here because a lot of people use it. So uh, these are areas where you can tend to be faked out. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, 
this, uh, this looked like a, a, a strong short, and it was for a couple of days, but now it's back over the 50, and therefore those that, 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 were, um, uh, that were convinced that we're going lower based on a close below the 50, um, had a, a, a good time, had a couple of good martini nights, and then uh, they threw it all up. <laughs> On, on Friday of last week. So um, it, it, I watch these actually as fake outlines. I, I, we can talk about that at some other uh, point, but, but I'm looking at the eight. Um, and when I see, uh, you know, this, this right here where you have a one or a group of small bodied candles, okay? When, when the market can't decide where it's going and then convincingly moves through the eight bar exponential moving average, that is a pretty good signal that you'll have some sh at least some short-term action in your favor. And you, did, you had to wait a few days, but, but you did get it. Um, but you notice, notice how, um, how it stuck to um, staying below the eight bar exponential moving average once it broke below. So hesitation followed by a, 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 a strong move through the eight really signals to me that we have a very good chance in the high 60% chance to see that I, from the testing I do, and you, you have to do it yourself, uh, of seeing a scalp work. I won't get into how I grab a scalp, but I always, I always, uh, I always buy at least two positions. I treat one as a scalp and I treat one as what I call a runner, if it's going to run. In this particular case, I would have gotten the scalp uh, and then I would have been stopped out at the runner. Once I, I get the scalp, I put a break even stop on the remaining position. Okay. If I'm trading four, it's two and two. If I'm trading six, it's three and three. But I treat them as two entities um, for, as far as a total number. So uh, this is a very high percentage probability here. Um, let's see if we see any others that, well, I don't see any real others here. Here's one that didn't work, right? Uh, so you need to make sure that your risk is is appropriate. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyway, I, as far as this, your, your answer, my, the answer to, to this is I would expect more upside in the near term, um, or at least more sideways action. Uh, I don't see it crumbling yet. I mean, we've we've had our chance here. The only I'm going to say something about the RSI first, and this is Hema Reddy's. Uh, I don't know if she's part of the uh, the, the uh, triumvir the, the the speakers here, but if if you get a chance to listen to uh, Hema Reddy, and you you need to do that when it comes to understanding the RSI. I won't get into what she teaches, but I'm a fan of Hema Reddy, and I, I think you need to if, you, if you're an RSI fan like I am, I think you need to to to, to take at least some of her free courses. In any event, uh, look, you're seeing a you're seeing a movement higher in price and a, a pretty consistent drop here in the momentum. Now, some people look at, some traders look at um, volume. I don't, uh, I mean, shoot me. Uh, I, again, it's a matter of simplicity, but I, I believe that if you think about momentum, you're going to get strong momentum when the volume starts to increase. When you, maybe I'm being a, a little bit simplistic, but that's me. That's the way I've learned to trade in a simple way, making sure that my risk on every trade is very low. This way, uh, uh, when I get a nice expansion, uh, it covers a lot of lo losing trades uh, if that happens to happen. And it doesn't happen much with a good tested system. So you really start off with a very positive outcome if you pay attention, again, to small risk. This right here, is very similar to what I just talked about. It's a, uh, I'd like to see a smaller body here, but you've got a couple of bodies here that are small. Remember that in the Japanese candlestick um, uh, science by the Japanese farmers, I guess four or 500 years ago, the body is all they care about, okay? Uh, it's probably true of bad marriages too. The body is all that you care about, but you, you have here, um, you have a small body, which means that the open and the close are very close to each other, which means that when people went home at the end of the day, or at the end of any time period, if you're using a five minute chart or 10 minute chart, this is a daily chart, there, there, there wasn't, a, a, wasn't a, a strong indication of direction, at least for that day. But when you have 
a couple of what I call hesitation bodies followed by a movement through that eight, you're going to see, you, you've got a high probability, see, probability of seeing some upside. Now we're going against the 20, 20 day moving average, which can be a resistance. But again, uh, you know, I don't know that I would make this trade with that, with that in mind, I would be looking for more. We've got a couple here, but the, the strength of this kind of candle needs a little bit more uh, to, uh, and the fact that we're staying now over the eight, I like the upside in the very near term. Um, but again, you know, you're seeing, uh, although, and although we have seen downward momentum, and still the price holding, I would expect the next move to be higher. But again, you need to wait for a trigger. Um, uh, this would be a very minimum position. I'm very, very big on position sizing. Position sizing. Uh, I think it's very uh, underplayed and under, uh, it's, it, it's underutilized. Uh, but because of the risk factor here, um, that's a pretty big move. Uh, this would be a very minimum position if I took it at all because of the risk factor, because my risk is always underneath the formation. Okay. Um, so um, let's take a look at, so I hope that answers you. Was that pretty good for you, Paul? Did you get what you wanted from that? I, I think that, uh, you know, that's, you're in a, you're in a flux position here. You know, if you're long, stay long. Uh, and hopefully you're not short. Let's see if Paul has a response there. Uh, okay, let's take a look at another uh, stock. Again, I'm, uh, I, I probably can comment even more on, on the um, on commodities, but let's take a look at uh, if Paul, yes, thank, okay, thank you, Paul. Thanks for affirming the fact that at least I got something done for you. All right, this is Apple, which um, I, I, I was looking at uh, this today for the first time in a long time, only because I was doing this presentation. And I know that a lot of people like to look at Apple. Now, in our loaded gun, oh, I use really solely the last three or four years, our loaded gun trading plan. And what I've shown you here is one of the uh, several triggers that we use um, in loaded gun. You can see it again here. Uh, look at this, uh, Vino. Vino, Vino, yeah, I'm going to call you Vino because I'm, I like wine. So um, here you have a couple of hesitations, right? Small bodies followed by a movement through the um, a movement through the eight bar exponential moving average. And look at this. At the same time, you had a rising price and a falling RSI. Now look, everybody, you know, everybody talks about the RSI and, 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 and MACD. And this combination is one of the truest and most reliable combinations in all of trading. And that is when you have a rising price and a descending RSI. Okay. Now you can argue with me and talk about this, um, this being higher than here uh, and, and this not being a new high, but I, I'm when you talk to me, talk bodies, okay? I mean, yes, it, you had a fleeting glance here at higher prices, but the, the idea is still correct. You have an increasing price, a decrease, this, and then followed by a trigger. And this is what you need in, in when you trade in a trade. You need a trigger to do something. You can't just anticipate. You anticipate waiting for the trigger, and then you got it here. Well, shorting here, you would have gotten your scalp here. And then the other part of your trade, remember, you always want to take multiple positions, let the other one win. You still would have been short this. So my, my, now, of course, we're, we're, we're coming here. And of course, this was a, uh, uh, this was a, a dividend report, I'm sure, uh, uh, or a, 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 um, an earnings report. And yeah, that I'm sure caused this gap, which is, uh, which is causing, caused this rundown. Now, um, you know, I can talk to you about places where it's going to stall. I mean, listen, higher highs and higher lows. These are all horizontal lines that you can draw and uh, try to figure out where you want to take multiple positions as you're peeling off. I, I am one of those people um, that, um, that take all my positions up front because I, I believe that you're best off using a trigger that is uh, that is a high probability for a scalp. So I always make sure that half of what I do is, is in the scalp area and the other half is for what I call lewd and lascivious profits. And, and I do that because mental, I am, a, my thing, my real thing is the mental and emotional capabilities of traders. That's really where I've made my reputation. Um, yes, I, I spent 10 years 
writing trading plans for professional traders in the beginning of my career. But, but, but the last 20 years have really been focused on the mental and emotional. And one of the biggest problems with traders when they have uh, a, a, a trade set up is, is um, do I take the quick profit that the market's given me? Do I take the low-hanging fruit or do I let it go? And if you don't make that decision before you trade, uh, you're going to come up with a very problematic situation where it looks good. You want it to run. You're reaching the point where you want to take your scalp, but you want to let it run because you're, you, 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 boy, this news was really negative and you can't, that's going to cause problems. I won't go through all the problems that it causes, um, but I think you've probably been through that mental construct. And the way you eliminate that mental construct is, is start from the beginning, before you trade, before you take a trade, that you're going to treat one as a scalp and one as a runner. This way, you don't have, listen, everybody wants the home run. Everybody wants this move, okay? But you, you know, you're not going to get it most of the time. So the idea is that, um, is that take your scalp and then let the rest run, okay? I, I can't stress that, and that's what we teach at, at, the, at the Discipline Trader where we, we're using our loaded gun trading plan. So uh, that, that's for another discussion. But look here, we have this and we have a gap. Now, I will say something about the gap and I will say something about the, the previous chart that I looked like in the video. Gaps tend to get filled. This is an old adage. Um, and, and I can see where this one is going to get filled. Uh, I mean, I, I do have very strong long-term feelings year over year about Apple. I mean, they're the monster in the room. They, they continue their innovations and so on. You can argue uh, that they used to be a little bit better at that, but but th this is a, this this market looks like it wants to head for the 200 day moving average somewhere in this area. Okay, so uh, again, I would let the eight bar exponential um, uh, uh, moving average be my guide. Okay. And we have a number of different ways that we use that to exit trades. I won't get into exiting right now, except for I'd like to see it stay on the lower side of the eight bar exponential moving average in order to can continue on the downside. So if you're short, stay short. If you're not, if you're not short already, you missed the opportunity. Okay. I wouldn't be getting short after a move like this with the RSI down in oversold territory. So uh, hopefully that helped you. Uh, with uh, with that, I'll get to Amazon here in a second. Um, looks lower 200. I'm not sure which which markets that you're looking at, but uh, all right, let's look at uh, P A N W. P A N W. What the heck is that? Again, I'm not uh, big on on uh, uh, Palo Alto. Palo Alto. Um, okay. Well, what am I looking at here? Apple again? <laughs> um, here's that setup that we talked about, right? Hesitation followed by a move through the eight. Look at you got the you, you got a nice scalp and then you got a run. Uh, you could count this as that move, a uh, bunch of hesitations and then a a nice move. Look at this move here, and you have it right here again. Again. Um, um, uh, I, I, there are some caveats about it, so don't go jumping on this. I'm just giving you my analysis. Don't go shorting everything that looks like this, but look at that. Um, you know, again, I'm not going to say much more. I, I just analyze this. Oh, the, only, the only difference is that right around this 200 area is, uh, is where we're headed for. Is that enough to, uh, to short it from here? Uh, uh, we have to get through this low here. Um, you know, uh, if we do break that on a day trade and, and we, uh, you know, and, and you take a, a small position, you can't take a big position at this level. OK, again, I'm back to position sizing. You know, uh, the, the other thing about traders, and I'm going to put this right at you. You need more discipline. Most traders need more discipline. But if you're not willing to train your mind, if you're not willing to meditate and do subconscious trainings to, to train your mind, you need to do some things that help as far as your trading is concerned. Uh, so that you uh, you can offset your unwillingness to be uh, patient. <laughs> Part of that unwillingness to work on your patience. One of the things that you would do is you would you would understand even more strongly than ever position size that you'll be willing to get into trades uh, that are 
Uh, see, I, I preach that eight plus trays, you, you need to have a trigger like the one, I, I have a few of these, but the ones I, the one I just showed you with the hesitation, this kind of trigger here, you need several of those eight plus triggers, ones that you have tested. Um, th there are some A triggers that will make you money over time. They may not have the same statistics, but for those people that like the action, it's okay to, to take an A trade as long as you're reducing your position size. So I think you understand what I'm saying. So in this particular case, if I was looking to, you know, I, I may have a sell stop below this area. You know, if I was if I was dying to get into this market, which I'm not, again, uh, we're looking at uh, similar, you know, uh, similar situation with the descending um, um, RSI. So uh, again, um, right, here's another look at that hesitation, uh, bot, small bodies. Okay, so, you know, join me in the, the, the um, loaded gun and I, I think you're going to, uh, well, just stick around. Listen, if you're not part of what I'm about, uh, I want to show you something real quick here. I'll, I'll show it to you maybe twice today, now and when I, when I finish. Um, where, would I, where did I put it? I think I put it right here. I think you can see this. If you go to, um, if you go to the disciplinetrader.com, you don't need the, the S, uh, it'll forward to this safe page here. Uh, the disciplinetrader.com forward slash three pro rules with, with the dash. And, and, and David will put it in the chat there. Uh, th three pro rules. So the discipline trader forward slash three dash pro dash rules. If you like the sound of what I'm saying and the simplicity of how I'm doing things, simple, effective, profitable kinds of ways of doing things. I, I wrote a, a white paper. It's not long. It's about five, five or six pages long on the th on three pro profit building rules professional traders include in their trading plans that you likely don't. Some of the concepts that I'm giving you here, again, I've written books on, on writing on trading plan, how to construct and build trading plans. Um, and I think some of them are still on Amazon. Uh, but I, I, I wanted to give you this opt-in. This will put you in touch with me. Also give you some, I think, some valuable information on how you may want to think, construct your thinking when you're looking at charts like that, if you like the way I'm looking at it. So I just wanted to give you this URL, again, disciplinetrader.com forward slash uh, three dash pro dash rules. So let me, uh, let me reduce that again. I, I just wanted you to have that. Um, Okay, so yes, it, it, I, I see that uh, uh, Steve talks about, uh, so somebody talked about the 200 being a target. I think I made that, I would make that target. If you're peeling off, that certainly would be a, a place. Um, okay, let's see if I've got any other um, requests here. Let's look at AMD. No commodities, huh? No gold, God, I love gold right now. Looks like it's it maybe bottoming. Okay. All right, here's AMD, okay, Advanced Micro Devices. Um, let me move this over here. Well, uh, okay, I'm not getting much help from the RSI, okay? We're, we're, we're going sideways here. Now, we did just break to the downside, so I think we have to honor that. Um, one candle, uh, uh, you know, if, if, if I were... Um, if I were drawing lines, and I'm not going to confuse you with lines, but I would, I would have drawn the bottom line here, and I would have seen um, that this is breaking out of that bottom line, really for the first time with some authority today. Um, but I, uh, uh, this bottom support area, okay, and then there would be a line up here for the resistance. But look, we are starting to slope down. Uh, you're seeing descending tops. There is some belief that we could take a light position on the way down. Again, what you don't want to do is be be flip flopped. You know where you. I, I like to see it. I like to see a, a, a close, two closes below uh, that that support line, or at least um, if I took again, if you took a position here at the end of the day based on closing below this this support line, uh, it, it would be on on a, a, a lower um, a, a small amount of positions, your, your position sizing would be small. But look what's happening here. This is a very similar, this, this is a, we've, here's where we crossed from one side of the eight to the other. Uh, we tried to see here is, here would be a, um, a, a signal to go long based on what I was talking about. 
uh, as far as a hesitation with a move here. But uh, again, not all of these are takeable. And this is not a takeable one, only because I like to see a lot of room between the close here and uh, and 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 at least the, um, the the twenty and the fifty moving average. There's not not enough room here to give me uh, much in the way of my scalp. I, I only take trades that I believe I can get my scalp with a very high probability. So uh, again, th this is a failure here. We're, we're seeing a lower slope. I mean, I I would not. I would not argue with you to take a, a small your smallest position. You should have a range of of um, uh, of position sizing when you trade. I, I take anywhere from two to six contracts in the in, in when, when I'm trading commodities. Okay, when I'm trading futures. So if it's light, I'll take two. If it, if I really like it, if it's against the double or triple top, I'll go uh, I'll go heavy. Um, but look what's happening here. I mean, the, the new trader is going to look here and say, look, we've got all these tops. And we seem to be coming down. But a more a more advanced trader would would look a little further back and um, would see this area right here as an area where uh, you're going to likely have some support. Okay, um, and because this was a, a, a monumental place to break through, uh, we had a movement higher. We had the ascension. Then we broke higher. And look what happened when it broke this line. So this has some importance. I, I, you know. I, I see this again as a pretty good scalp if you wanted to do that on a daily basis, uh, you know, be, because this kind of thing, if you took two positions and, and used one as a scalp and then move your stop to break even, then uh, you can, uh, you, you know, you have the chance to see much lower prices if that were to happen. Um, but I'm not getting much help around and, um, you know, this is still a bit of a mess. So I would not be in this stock, but again, from your lack of, um, if you have a lack of patience, uh, go ahead and show it a couple and look for a, uh, you know, a, a, as long as we're closing down here below uh, this support line here, okay, or at least below this low right here, which looks like it, it may have teased the support line also. Okay, let's look at, uh, at another. If we got anybody got any commodities they want to take a look at? Gold, out of boy. All right, Jim. Hi, right, Jimmy, baby. Let's take a look at gold. Uh, let's see. I had that on Ninja. Oh, hang on one second. There's Ninja. I guess it doesn't like me to do that. Let's, um, I'm going to reduce this. There it is, because I'm already on Ninja. All right, I'll get this right. All right, I, I'm sure I have a gold right here. This is usually where I park gold. Yeah. All right. Uh, and, 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 you know, for, you, all of you, for those wondering what you're looking at, um, I, I, again, here's that eight bar exponential moving average. This is another moving average I use as a backstop. This stops me from taking trades and so on. But but I can't explain, you know, my this is not about my trading plans, it's about you and what I feel about what you're doing. But look at the simplicity. Uh, this is the RSI. And I've got a couple of lines. That is it. That is it. OK, and, and I, I really believe you should be looking at a lot less probably than what you're looking at. But let's look at gold in the meantime. All right. Here's here is the daily chart in gold. And uh, the reason uh, the reason I I think uh, we may want to continue to look at it is is that we're coming to a very critical area here in this 1900 area, 1900. You know, it, it pokes below a couple of times. But uh, th this is an area where we've seen some really nice support over time. Uh, you had it here. We did break it down in here, but but came right back up. And this is the that's 1900. We break that. Here would be the next uh, in the 1700 area. Uh, you know, it, it's a little bit counterintuitive when you're looking at gold and the fact that it's it's been doing all of this uh, in, in the in the realm of inflation. But gold tends still can, tends to look way ahead of things. I'm not sure why I have the, uh, I, I I drew this line based on this. Um, this low here, looking for something significant. Uh, I'm not really quite seeing it yet, but um, you can see where, what I would be looking at here as a gold player. I mean, look at this RSI, we're already down in the 30s. We could probably drop to the 20s if we match this. This would be an area where I, where I would be looking for my signal to go long. I would be looking to go long. Now, um, you know, when, when inflation is upon us, um, when inflation is anticipated, that's when gold tends to go. Inflation is upon us. That's where gold tends to do what you're seeing here uh, since, uh, since, since April, May, uh, since this double top. But look at here. You had a double top. 
Look at this. You had a double top. This is also a nice entrance signal. You had a, a double top here, but look what we have here. Uh, we, have a, we have a small body followed by a reasonable body through the eight. Now, I would have liked to have seen this a stronger body, but it didn't really matter. As long as we're, uh, we're, we're, we're dealing with a double top, we're dealing again with a descending RSI. Okay, there's a lot. So when you take this signal, when you would have taken this signal short and you had a range of two to six, you may have uh, gone with something in the three, four area. Okay, and if you take an odd number, I treat the, I treat the, the odd half as the scalp. In other words, if you take three positions here, two will be the scalp, one will be the runner. Okay, uh, so look, and look what happened. I mean, it's very now, but but look what happened here. Here's a here's here's something where you would have gone along. Actually, I won't tell you why this is not a signal. It, it's not a signal for a couple of reasons. One, it's up against the guardrail, and again, uh, I, I guess I'm talking too much about my trading system. Let's look at what's going on with um, with gold. You're seeing right here is another signal right here. Uh, hesitations on one. Here's here's a, a small body push through the A, and and then boom. Um, you need more than just one close above it to, uh, your stop is up here. You need more than one close above it to negate it. And you can see how it's going. So this is, you know, uh, if you're short, stay short. Um, but, but I don't think there's much, you know, I would have been peeling off. I would have peeled off one right in this area as it tested this low. The fact that we've, we've now, uh, gone out, um, gone into, um, an area where we're, we're approaching a very strong support. Uh, I don't know that I'd get short here. If I was a gold trader and I am, uh, I'm waiting for a major long position here to be established. And I would do it if we saw that kind of has this kind of action or anything similar to it. One of my one of my signals, I showed you one of them. I've got several of them that go to the long side, um, in this case, using the eight. And, and I would make that happen. I mean, um, there's a lot to be excited about here because, uh, you know, gold is something that not only reacts to uh, inflation, but it reacts to world situations. I don't think um, I, I, I don't think um, uh, the war is over with, um, uh, with with Ukraine. I don't. Of course, it's not. I, but I think surprise things can happen there. I'm hearing a little of saber rattling recently from uh, from North Korea. There's a lot of reasons to believe that there are um, you know gold could get tickled. Uh, so I would be looking from, again, you were all technical traders here. I would be looking for a resistance or a support right in here and then a reason to go long. Uh, but uh, this is too late to short. But if you are short, go ahead and stay short. Okay. Hope that helps you. All right. Uh, CL, let's take a look at the crude. I have that also on one of my, um, what, I, what I do is I wait for some of the signals that I like. Uh, like the one I just showed you here. This is a Japanese yen, which I one of my favorite things to trade. Um, let's look at, you say crude oil. I like crude. It, oh, incidentally, you crude oil traders, if you're trading on Ninja, um, if you look at QM, Q, Q is in Queen, M is in Mary. QM is a contract that's half, a half crude contract. I really, really like that contract. Uh, boy, I hope that was a daily chart I was looking at in gold. <laughs> was it? I have to go back. Um, I don't think anybody corrected me. Um, I'm sure that was a daily. All right, here's a daily chart in gold. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, in the crude oil. But I like that QM contract because even small accounts, uh, you can take two QMs, which which is still a big combination contract, but you can treat it as two halves. Okay, so it's a really nice size. Here, here look at this. That formation again. And look, if you're getting your scalp, we would have had our scalp here, okay? So uh, right here, um, the problem is that this particular, um, we use different ones, but um, th this is a, a longer term um, uh, or, or a wider um, EMA, maybe the 34, I use, use Fibonacci numbers sometimes, I use the 50 sometimes, but in this particular case, uh, this usually, this can supply some resistance. Uh, or support in this area or resistance to the downside, depending how you look at it. But um, certainly somebody who was uh, went short a couple of positions here would have uh, gotten their scalp and then uh, moved the stop to break even of, of which you, you still would have been in it or maybe stopped out. I don't know. You would have had a winning trade and moved on. But um, in any event, you would have had your scalp in a profitable approach. Um, but the fact you can see where it's resisting here, 
Um, this is still a short trade. Again, I, I'm in the analysis that I'm doing for you today. Um, there are a number of ways I look at markets. I'm giving you probably the simplest and the most effective way to look at markets in, uh, using the eight in this case. Uh, and um, uh, as long as we stay on the south side of the eight, th th this to me is still a short trade. Uh, you're seeing a diving, um, uh, the RSI looked like it may have helped a little bit. It looks like we had a um, the same top on the RSI, even though we had a higher price. So this is enough, even though it's not an official divergence, it's divergence from the standpoint that this is no direction and this is markedly higher during the same period of time. But I would have to say that, um, you know, I, I'd be watching here for a signal uh, on the downside. And, and actually this particular one, because we're, we're uh, doing it against another similar top, uh, recent top, it's not so recent, but back in April, uh, I, uh, this may have been a three for me, okay? I would have sold three here and then taken two out at the scalp and uh, maybe uh, probably would have gotten stopped out on the break even looks like because I would have moved my stop to where I got in. I wait until this bar is closed and I move on the first, I try to get the first uh, trade of the next bar, okay? My finger is on the on the mouse ready to go. Okay, so this is really where, um, so, you know, I, if you're short, um, you know, if you're doing it in a different way, then I'm, I'd be out of this trade already in the way I've just described because we have, a, um, but, but I, it, it still looks like we're, we're gonna favor the short side uh, until we, we have some uh, reasonable trigger and action uh, over in my, particular way of doing things over the eight, okay? So we're losing momentum pretty quickly here. Um, it would be nice to have a couple of sideways days, which I like to look for, and then a, another break lower. So, um, you know, that, that, that's, um, that's really what I see here uh, on the crude oil. So uh, listen, this is toppy in the crude oil. Um, I mean, I can hit you with a bunch of fundamentals to make you feel better. Uh, about slowing the Chinese economy and you know and the world you know coming down as far as its ability to produce goods and services, and, and therefore the um, you know crude oil's demand down, and therefore we should look, look all of that is crap. Um, <laughs> the only important thing is the price because everything that is now in the market is 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 in the price and what what is seen for the foreseeable future. So um, love this chart, love the potential here. I would have had my small uh, gain here, but I, I would have been out of it here looking for a little sideways movement to re-enter on the short side if, if it gave it to me, okay? Uh, but I certainly would not mind getting back into this trend if we see a signal on the upside of which I showed you one trigger. I've got several that I like to use, okay? So, um, why do I only see a portion of my chart? I'm not sure, only partially. Uh, can you see what, can you see what I'm looking for? Uh, David, can you, uh, can you see my screen? Are you with me? I'm not here. Yeah, I, I, I can hey, see Norman, it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, okay. Not yeah. a problem. I, I see people not seeing uh, seeing the screen. Um, yeah, I saw those comments too. I'm not sure what. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's you know, it's, be just a glitch. It's that, probably the hand of God. You know, I I don't. <laughs> I don't uh, let's take a look at the uh, heating oil. Let's see, I I don't trade heating oil primarily, but let's see if I can find it here for you. Uh, Oh, there it is. Well, New York Harbor, that's it. Man. Looks pretty good. All right. Um, I'd be long. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Uh, um, look what's happening here. Okay, I'm, I'm laughing, but I'm, I'm not long yet. But when you see something like this, um, let, me, let me look real fast at, at a weekly. I just want to make sure that. Um, uh, that we that we don't have a, see, see where the limit maybe on the on the on the long side. Sometimes Ninja takes a while to give me to to, to change here. Uh, it's not changing. Oh, there it is. Here's your weekly. Yeah, yeah, you know that we're 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 kind of a t listen. Well, I mean, look at this. We're we're in last year's high area here. Double top 
triple top and and now we're we're you know so you know this is not something that um there's two two ways of looking at this uh for the grandiose people and the and and those that like to stick to some of the basics i don't see much i mean yes look at this uh, but but i don't see a whole lot of upside that i can count on before uh, I have to face the challenge of these tops. I think there's going to be some action in the facing of, of these tops. But getting back to the, um, and, and you know, there's still a little bit of room here. Uh, you're, you're going to 340, 340, 350. So there's still some room on the upside for a, a little bit uh, on the quicker uh, quicker trade side. But let's, let's look at, um, let me look here again at the daily. But here's that, here's that, um, symbol that if we end here, and we likely will, um, you know, we, we, who knows, but you have to wait till the close of the day. And, and, and if you're willing to hold this overnight, um, you would put your, 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 you would buy at the very last few tips of this market, you want to make sure it's going to close up here. Uh, so you're going to wait for a little, literally the last five or 10 seconds. I've seen markets move in, in shorter periods of time. You want to put your stop down here, an obvious place to put the stop. Um, but you have to measure your risk before you do that. So if you took two, and, and again, I like to take at least two positions, because the other part of what I, was, what I wanted to say is that when a market, uh, let's go back to the weekly. Um, this could be considered an accumulation, okay? This could be considered sideways. If we do break on the upside here, we can see some fabulous, fabulous uh, move, movement higher. And I mean a movement of, uh, of crazy proportions because what, what we usually do with, with uh, accumulations like this, we used to, when we did this on paper, we would put the, we would take a compass and we put the needle of the compass here before the breakout. And then we would put, um, we would put the, uh, and we would put the pencil here and we'd leave the needle where it is. And then we would roll it up. And you can see how high, if, I, if it was rolling down, it would be all the way down here. If this broke higher uh, and started to move convincingly higher, the top could be. And why would that happen from a fundamental standpoint? Uh, I think it's getting pretty hot outside. And all of a sudden, if uh, if this heat continues through September and even into October, like it did last year in record time, uh, the use for heating oil could be something that we're not even anticipating. So um, because of that, um, because of that, I have no problem. Uh, I would have no problem with uh, looking at a small long position if this market closes over the eight like this, and I don't mean just sneaking over it if, if we stay in this kind of position, okay? You, you want the breakthrough to be one of the bigger recent candles in this particular trigger that I'm going on. This is one of our basic loaded gun triggers. And I, I talk about loaded gun because I, I, my wife hates the fact that I named it loaded gun, but you know, if this is the trigger and this is the barrel of the trigger moving higher, that, that, that's really where that came. But we've got a couple, a few of them. You need more than one trigger really to make it happen for you. Otherwise you're gonna run into patience problems, okay? So uh, that's my thought here. And that's a pretty clear thought here. I mean, you're, what you want is you're, you're resuming an uptrend. I mean, you've just come down to test uh, the only accumulation in this whole run besides right at the beginning. And, and it looks like we're about to not only survive that, but close uh, over, over that entire accumulation if we wind up uh, above this accumulation here, which we're at right now. So really like to look at that. And I really appreciate whoever this was that showed this to me, because this is the kind of trade that I like to take. I like to take this kind of trade. Okay. So um, very good. Any, let's see, uh, everybody can see. Uh, all right. We've got gold. I, I can take some stocks, some gold, whatever you want to do. Um, hopefully that helped you on the heating oil, which I'm going to look like to be a part of I'll be watching that. Uh, thanks, Norman. Appreciate your insight. Oh, thank you. You're welcome, Mark. Anybody else want a simplistic version of, because I don't get any comp more complicated than this. Okay, what I do is I'm, you know, I'm continuing to look at, uh, at charts um, that uh, here's the Euro dollar, here's this Japanese yen, here's the gold we looked at. Uh, although this is heating oil, let's change that to, back to crude so I don't get too confused. Uh, CL. 
because I like to keep uh, my things in order. And this one is copper, which been a, has been a great, a great. Uh, let's look at real fast the um, the bonds uh, because uh, okay, is this uh, okay? I'm I'm not looking at any. Let's look at the bonds because I think that's going to be a hot market. It's going to continue to be a hot market. I mean, look at this chop. I mean, you can. Oh, this is the five minute. Let's look at the. <laughs> uh, that this looks like uh, we may be hitting low in the short term. Let's look at the daily. Uh, not much here except for stay away. Uh, so I won't even look at it. I haven't looked at it in a while because I've been trading the, the Japanese yen, which is, you know, when you see, let me show you something about the Japanese yen. What I love about the Japanese yen as compared to even the euro dollar, whatever, it's got a nice small basis. So you small traders out there with the small accounts, uh, even $5,000 and $10,000 accounts. You could trade two contracts of the Japanese yen and really have enough control. Uh, it, it, look at this. Here, here's a, uh, this is the eight right here. Uh, here's that movement that I, I here's that signal that I show, showed you where the hesitation candle is on one side of the eight bar exponential moving average. And then you have the, 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 the movement, strong movement through. And it's one of the bigger candles, even bigger than this candle. So it's a pretty good chance you'll get your scalp of which you've got here. You got to watch it because this is going to be support as, uh, as it's kind of trying to show you here. But you would have gotten your scalp in, in this area. And I won't go through how I measure the scalp. But um, uh, you would have continued uh, being short with your second position, but your first position would have had this would have had the nice scalp here. So um, here's another entrance here that would have would have scared you a little bit, but you would have been in for this nice run with that. Here's another sample with the with the one of the primary loaded gun triggers. Look at this that would have led to this. I mean uh, here that you would have had your scalp. So uh, right here, uh, I, I remain, sh I, you know, if you're not short, uh, you know, this is not a great place to get short because you need to get through this survival. But and it's more than this. This happened right here. This this hesitated because of all of this. You have a lot of interest in the market, a lot of uh, people, a, lo a lot of traders who have investments on both sides of the market at this level. Those that held are looking for the market to come down. So they're, they're congratulating themselves for holding, uh, but but you know the market comes back up again. They'll they'll probably all cover and and um, again match this high. So there's a reasons why markets move the way they do. You can see right here where we broke it immediately, and uh, those people that that put in their uh, their stop right above again just got short and got stopped out. So don't don't be you know wait on this. This is a five minute. This is the five minute chart here. Let's look at. Um, Let's look here at the, at the at the daily. I think we, uh, but but this is really what I wanted to show you. Um, this is a major downward movement. I mean, this thing has gone all the way from 81 all the way to 68 cents to the dollar. I mean, this is just, you know. So when the, when you see something like this, you know, a new trader will just say to themselves, "Hey, this is." Wait till this thing. I want to be the guy. I want to be the guy, the gal that that, that finds the bottom. Well. <laughs> don't do it don't do it you know look, look at this it just continues yeah if you had if you had taken some of my scalp advice here you you would have gone along here and gotten your scalp here and um you know th there are places to counter trade because sometimes they can have strong moves but to continue it it's going to take a lot it's going to take a, a, a probably a some sort of a complicated bottom in order to turn this kind of a trend around so when you see this in the long term Okay, when you see a, a, a strong, this is the strongest trend in all of trading, currencies, commodities, anything uh, on the uh, on the downside. So when you see this, and then you then you look at your shorter term, uh, when you consider your position sizing, you want to consider uh, taking a larger position in the friendly um, in the friendly direction, which is south. So this right here would have been a this would have been a sixer. When I say I have a, a potential range to take a, a position from uh, two positions to one to uh, to six, I would have taken six here. Um, there's a number of reasons I have this this um, out to my back, uh, this protective I call it the um, the, the uh, guardrail, and with a nice punch through the um, the the eight. But not only uh, picking up on this 
shorter trend, which is, but it's picking up on that way longer trend that uh, apparently hasn't exhausted. So you can see right now that it doesn't even look like it. We'll, we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm just playing when I start to conjecture that it's, it may have some trouble here, but I, I, it looks as if we're, we're going to come down in this area, but I won't care because I already took my scalp and I already, and I have my break even. Now, as this thing extends, I'm not gonna keep my break even here. I'm going to, I can't show you now, but I'm gonna show you some great techniques to hold on to your profit, but enough to let it continue to expand if you want. So I think we have time to take one more. The screen is so large, uh, it doesn't show what I'm indicating. I'm not sure why, why that is. Um, maybe it's because I'm using a, a uh, I'm hoping most people can see this, Mary. Um, or in any event, that's uh, that was the, I'm sorry, this was the bonds here. All right, that was the Japanese yen. I wanted to absolutely show that to you. I think we're, um, you know, we're at the 52 level and I think maybe I can take one more if you want. Um, sounds like computer's not scaling the screen image. We're gonna have to take a look at that. I appreciate that, Mary. Uh, I know some can see it, some, some can see it see it and some uh, can't. All right, um, I just want to show you one more thing so that if you like the way uh, it sounds, the way I've been talking to you and relating the markets to you, I want you to own this. It's a, it's a, it's a free book. It's a, it's a white paper, really. It's only about four or five pages. Three profit building rules that professional traders include in their, pro in their trading plans that you likely don't. And again, I've written books on, on, on building and running trading plans. These are things that most new traders don't really know about, but it's, it's always in the back of the mind of the professional trader and sometimes in the front when a market develops. So I want you to have this, uh, just go to the disciplinetrader.com forward slash three pro rules, three dash pro dash rules. So make sure you put those dashes in there. David will put that, uh, put it in the chat again for you. I appreciate that, David. And um, uh, this will hook you up with me and um, you'll get my emails and we can work on other things. Not only the mental part, but I've got a lot of free stuff and, and of course, uh, paid stuff for, um, uh, for members of what I do. But simplicity works. I want you to be part of the simple and profitable way of doing business, especially when it comes to prop trading. If you're interested in prop trading, where you're trading their money, and you get the profit. This is what I'm training traders to do right now uh, with, with the techniques that I use. So uh, get this, uh, just get on my list through this um, ebook, uh, not ebook, but the white paper. Again, it's only a few pages long, but I think you really like it. Kind of give you more insight on the way I think. So if you like what you've heard today, um, join me in this, uh, in, in this way. Okay, David, I think I'm done. I appreciate your having me again. And uh, uh, this is a great lineup. So um, after I do my thing at uh, noon, I'm going to be back uh, watching the, those, uh, the next presenters. So appreciate you having me.